Today, our main goal is to understand the difference between two average velocity equation. Um, Mr. Berry, uh, I'm from Columbia University. And my name is Sir Isaac Berry, and I'm doing my bachelor's in math with a minor in physics at NYU. Let's prove that. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to throw in something with 37 degree at 20 meter per second, right? So what does that mean? Uh, this is dt graph, right? So I'm going to find the time and mass obtained. So the velocity has two component, Vx, which is 16, and Vy, which is 12, OK? And then uh, from here, what are you going to do? How did I get 16? So 20 cosine uh, uh, 37, 16, 20 sine 37, which is 12. OK, so this is how I got it. Okay, so now I want I want to find the time. To find the time, you have to use dy is equal to viyt plus half ayt squared, right? So this is uh, dy. It's gonna be zero to zero. So this is twelve t minus five t squared. So then zero is equal to twelve minus um, uh, minus five uh, t. Okay. So t is equal to 12 over 5, 2.4. vi is 12, vf is negative 12, divided by 2, that's 0, divided by 2 equals 0. The total displacement is 0, so it doesn't even matter what the time is, even though it's 2.4, so that's a 0. Problem is, let's say uh, Isaac is uh, moving from A to B with uh, 40 mile per hour and B to A immediately he moves from B to A B to A all right with uh, 60 mile per hour per hour okay so um, Isaiah can you find the average velocity uh, using both equation and this distance is 120 meters okay in fact, we actually don't need the distance, uh, as you can see in the second equation. But here's what we're going to do. Okay. Oh, this is a pretty good shot. Okay. So, first of all, how can we figure out... Oh, can I do one and you do the other one? Sure. All right. So, I'll do one. I'll do the first one. Uh, as I said, uh, you don't need distance, but let's do the distance. T1 is going to be uh, uh, three hour. And T2 is going to be uh, 2 hours. Right? Okay. Uh, how is that? Because T1 is uh, distance over time, uh, distance over velocity, 120 over 40. This is 3. And this is 120 over 60. So this is 2. Very nice. So if you do the displacement versus time, displacement versus time graph, what do you get? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is 5, this is 3. What do you get? 1, 2, 3, 4. What is it? 40, uh, let's, let's go by 40. Yeah, 40, uh, 80, uh, 120, right? Okay, so the displacement, um, so the displacement, um, as a kid in California, mm -hmm. so the displacement, uh, displacement is going to be past three seconds, the displacement is this. And next two, uh, next two hour is displacement is this. So this is 40 T and this is negative 60. T. So if we do the VT graph, what do you get? This is 20, this is 40, uh, this is negative 20, this is negative 40, negative 60. this is negative 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So then the 1, 2, 3 hour, this is 120, and 3 to 5 hour, this is negative 120. Therefore, the displacement, uh, the average velocity is, average velocity is Vf minus Vi, the average velocity is uh, zero. Um, okay. Uh, do you agree with this? Yeah. Okay. So now, this second one is kind of rubbish for this kind of problem, not going to lie. So what we should instead be using is... Vf of 
VF times, well, no, they're not really a good way to put it. For this problem in specific, we use V1, the velocity for the first trip, times T1, the time it takes for the first trip, plus V2, which is the velocity of the trip back, times T2, the time for the trip back, divided by T1 plus T2. But the thing is, well, with these kinds of problems where we are able to use these, which are in problems like projectile motion where the acceleration is constant, T1 and T2 are often the exact same. Like, for example, T1 for getting up to an object's peak trajectory is equal to T2 of going back down. So we're able to simplify it to this. But it's not that simple in this problem. So, what's V1? 40. What's T1? Well, he, cal uh, he calculated that right here, Mr. Barry. So we get 3, and then plus, well, actually minus 60 times T2, which is 2 hours, divided by T1 plus T2. So, are you kidding me? We get 120 minus 120 over 5, which is equal to 0. And if you're curious, the same approach also works with the speed, but instead we'd be putting 120 plus 120 to get 48. Very obvious scenario that comes to mind where there's a totally constant acceleration is, of course, projectile motion, throwing an object up and down. So let's say we have an object aimed at 90 degrees, so it goes up and then it falls all the way back down with no horizontal motion in between. So that means that its distance over time graph, of course, looks vaguely like this. But what is the angle you are throwing the ball? 90. 90 degrees, okay. So, how do we actually prove this relation? Well, first of all, let's think about what we mean here exactly. So this is not just supposed to be true if VF is the moment it hits the ground and VI is the moment it goes up. This is meant to be true for any initial and final position and velocity that we choose in the ball's trajectory. So, how do we figure this out? Well, we know d is equal to vit plus half a t squared. So, to ground this problem in reality, let's say we're throwing it up with an initial velocity in the y direction only of 10 meters per second. So, that means the, distance, the function of distance, the distance as a function of time is equal to vi, which is 10 t plus half a, so minus 5, because that's half of g, t squared. This is our distance formula, 10 t minus 5 t squared. So we have essentially, what is delta d right over here? Well, that's d final minus d initial and then divided by t final minus t initial. So we get 10t final minus 5t final squared minus 10t initial plus 10t initial squared divided by t final minus t initial. Or in other words, if we factorize this, oh, how do we factorize this? Well, it's pretty clear this is 10 uh, times... Oh, crap. I don't know why I did this. This would be 5. Someone probably pointed that out in the comments. Minus 5 times TF squared minus TI squared divided by uh, yeah. TF minus TI. So, of course, this cancels out, and you might not know what to do with this, but, of course, this is just a difference of squares factorization. So we get TF minus CI times TF plus TI. So this factor cancels out. So we get 10 minus 5 
times Tf plus Ti on this side of the equation, which is change in distance divided by change in time. Now, how do we find Vf plus Vi over 2? Well, what's the velocity function? Well, Vt is equal to, we already know the equation, Vi plus At. So we have Vi is 10 minus D, which is 10T. All right. So that means that Vf plus Vi divided by 2 is equal to 10 minus 10TF plus 10 minus 10TI. No, 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 you get crowded over there. Do, do go to the next line. Completely go to the next line. 10 minus 10 TF plus 10 minus 10 TI over 2. So this combines to 20, and we get, oh my gosh, 10 minus 5 times TF plus TI. But wait a second. Beautifully, we see that that's the exact same thing as what we got on the other side, which means that for an arbitrary initial time that we choose and an arbitrary final time we choose, this relation holds. But remember that this is only if our acceleration, which in this case is g, is constant.